Welcome everyone to today's lunchtime learning here on our In Brilliance Facebook page. Today we're going to be talking about adding curved text or circular text or shaped text around an embroidery design such as this adorable cute little applique ghost from the Itch to Stitch. So let's pop on in the software and see exactly how this is done in In Brilliance Essentials. In our software, I have a completely blank design page, so we are starting from scratch. The first thing that I need to do is to add my embroidery design to this page. I will do that using the merge stitch file function. So I have my hoop open I'm, and I have it displayed. I will go to merge stitch file and I need to know exactly where that design is located. Yeah, I happen to have a folder called Itch to Stitch, and here is the Ghost Hugging the Candy Corn. It comes in a variety of sizes and a bunch of formats, and I plan to scroll through, and I'm going to find the one that is 5 by 7 because that's the size that, are, that I want to use. So as I select it, I, I notice that when I click on it one time, it has a check mark it, next to it. If I'm on Mac, if I'm on Windows, it will have a selection box. I will choose import and it will automatically import this design into the center of my hoop. So now I need to, I'm making my plan and I would like my name to go right across the top here. So I'm going to, to add a name, I'm going to click on the lettering tool. That adds ABC, and I'm going to put my mouse cursor on the stitches of the ABC and move them up just so that they're in a place where I can see them. In my lettering properties here, before I change to different fonts, because I may want to preview a couple different ones, I'm going to first type my text in singular text, and I'm going to type in Samantha, because this is the name I'm choosing. And if you notice, it's, it's a rather long name. So I'm going to have to make sure that whatever font I choose is going to fit because I kind of want it to snug right in this section. So I'm going to, I could use the block font, but let me choose, go through here and let's see which ones I have. First one I'm going to choose just to play with and look at it. I will choose, this is the copycat font. And I thought, well, this might be kind of nice, except I really didn't want them all to be the same height. So the ease of using BX fonts is that I can ch choose the font I want, and if I don't like it, I can simply go back down to my list and choose another one. So I'm going to choose Courtside, and again, this one's all capital letters. So it's almost the same, but I, I really want it to go up and down like a normal font. So I'm going scrolling through my fonts to see, and I thought, oh, this, this one called Payphone. First of all, it comes in a half an inch size, which could work because I have a small, I have, my name is really long, so I'm going to have to choose a smaller font. So choose Payphone, and look at that. It is a nice, that's the style that I want, and I thought, well, that's going to be perfect. So I kind of move it down because, and let's zoom in so that we're looking a little bit closer at the top of this. Because when you're working in embroidery software, you're customizing, you really want to see what it is that you're working on. So I want Samantha, and I sort of want it to start over here and, and snug its way down right along this edge here. And I can do that using the circular text function. So I don't have to do any more typing. All I have to do is go over here to my properties, and you see where it says I'm currently in single line text, and right to the right of this, I have circular text. Now, I choose circular text, and nothing happens. Now, that's because I really haven't applied it. I can do that by either hitting the enter key after the word, and you'll notice it automatically applies that circular text. The other thing I can do is use the slider for the radius, which will adjust the, the curvature. Now, I started straight and I have my curvature sort of set, but it doesn't really help me as far as if I move it this way, I really want it to be around this side here. So I'm gonna move it on top of this area and the other, last month, 
And in our playlist, you notice I played with the adjusters. And we the, they, the way that they worked on single line text is very similar to how they work on circular text. Except when I click on the center adjuster for the capital letter S, do you see there's a down arrow? That means that I can slide it so that it goes around basically following the curvature of my circle. And as I do that, I can see, well, that radius isn't quite enough because there's too much of a gap here. So I'm going to click on my lettering text so that everything's selected again. And in this slider, I'm going to make that radius just a little bit more. And I may have to play with this a bit because as you see, my letters, I'm, going, I'm getting really close to this, this edge here. So even if I were to fit it in, those letters probably need to be a little bit closer together. So I'm going to use my spacing just to snug them in as close as I can without getting them too close. And then I may use my slider again to adjust a little bit more. And I'm looking, oh, it's, I can see it's almost there. And I can either adjust my radius a little bit more, maybe, maybe move it up to three. That's looking pretty darn good. Actually, that's pretty darn close, except this part's just a little, little too far for my liking. And I know, I'm moving my chair because I'm thinking that by doing that, I can snug it in. But when I have this selected, do you notice I still have my rotation here? That lets me rotate that entire circle just a bit so that I can make my adjustments and see if they fit exactly. Playing with curves is a very visual thing, so you may have to play by moving your letters, and I can move in a couple of these, just a little bit closer together, maybe move this T up to get the spacing just right so that I can say, wow, that's pretty darn good for how close I want it to be here and, and be happy with um, working with this. I'm looking mostly at the space between this curvature and that may not be a perfect circle. So we really have to take a step back zoom out of it and say, is that going to work? And I'm looking that everything would work except if that A was just a little bit closer in. This is my visual. So as opposed to using the lower triangle, I'm actually going to click on the dot of the A, move it down just a little bit and rotate that one little A just a little bit to play and say, I think that's gonna be spot on exactly the way I want it. Now, one more thing I may want to do is I want to, the letters come in as their own color, and I would like them to be the same color as the orange in the nose and the orange of the candy corn. So I'm gonna select my letters, go to my color chip here. When I select the color chip, it will bring up the Brother Thread Palette, but remember, if I click on palettes here in my thread palette list, it says current page right across the top, and I can scroll through and choose any of the colors that are being used in this particular design, and clay brown is the orange that is currently being used. So there we have our cute little applique design with Samantha going right across the edge of the top in a nice curve. Isn't that going to be nice? And I'm ready to go to my embroidery machine and stitch this out. Hopefully you found that interesting. There is so much that you can do with lettering and even with curved lettering. Be sure to go to our Embrilliance YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, we have a, a playlist just devoted to lettering and a couple videos that focus just on circular text. Thanks for taking some time out of your schedule today. We hope you learned a little bit about your software and hopefully you'll have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me. Bye.